Welcome to God's Playbook with your host, Father Rico Passero. It's a 20, 10, 5, touchdown! Touchdown! Let's play ball. Friends, welcome back to God's Playbook. Today is the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. And as you come to Mass, you're going to hear the scriptures. Today I want to use a hymn that is based on Matthew 17, 1 to 9 written by Bob Heward, called Transfigure Us, O Lord. Let's pay attention to the lyrics, then we'll talk about them. So the refrain is, Transfigure us, O Lord, transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us. Speak your healing word. And where you lead will follow, transfigure us, O Lord. So reflecting on this refrain, what does the word transfiguration mean? Transfigured means that the figure is changed, transformed. And so it's so important for us to realize that as Jesus was transfigured on the mountain before Peter, James, and John, they saw him in a different light. It was the divine side of Jesus that came forth. So when we ask God to transfigure us, We recognize our need for conversion. We recognize our need to be changed, that we are to be transformed into another Christ. We are to look like God. This does not suggest that we are God, but that we are to be God-like, holy, righteous, forgiving, loving. The list goes on and on. So transfigure us, O Lord, recognizes our need to be changed. So it's another way of speaking of conversion or inner transformation. Break the chains that bind us. This is imagery that's often used in even Amazing Grace and many other hymns that we like, this idea of being chained, shackled, held back. Break the chains that bind us. You know, Ask yourself the question, what is binding you at this time? What is binding me at this time? How do we invoke the power of God to break those chains for us? Speak your healing word. The word of God, as we've talked extensively on this podcast, brings healing to us. So speak your healing word. Notice it is God who speaks to us. And where you lead will follow. Pretty clear what we want to do there, right? When Jesus said to the apostles and each of us, come follow me, He doesn't say, go up there and I'll meet you there in 10 minutes. That's not how it works, right? A good leader, a good coach, a good captain is somebody who's willing to go there first, and then the players will follow them. That's how Jesus is with us. He goes first. Where you lead, I'll follow. And then again, transfigure us, O Lord. Let's now focus on the verses because I think they can also help to shape us today too. Down from heights of glory and to the depths below, the love of God self-emptied, the love of God to show. You light the path before us, the way that we must go. So again, clearly identifying that God is the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus calls himself this. He is the way. And early Christianity was called just that. It wasn't called the church. At the time of the apostles, it was called the way Even Saul, as he was persecuting Christians, it was anyone who was following the way. Well, we recognize that Jesus is the way. Verse 2, light for those in darkness, the hungry have their fill. Glad tidings for the humble, the healing of all ills. In these we glimpse your glory, God's promises fulfilled. So this recognition of God working among us, the many miracles that happen on a daily basis, though sadly sometimes the world does not attribute them to God. Every birth of every child, even to two faithless parents, is indeed a miracle and a gift from God. The times in which those who are hungry, whether it be for food, for shelter, for understanding, for friendship, they are filled. Why? Because God inspires others into action speaks of humility, healing of our ills. It is God who is the divine physician who transforms and brings life. Verse 3 says, Pardon for the sinner, a shepherd for the sheep, 
a drink of living water for all who thirst and seek, and feasting at your table, the lowly and the least. So again, it is God that feeds, it is God that transforms, and it is a God who is the shepherd of souls. Sheep go on their own way, often get lost. How many times have we been lost sheep, and yet it is Christ who calls us back to him. Verse 4, to the holy city, Jerusalem, you go, your face set toward the ending, the cross to be your throne. Shall we journey with you and share your paschal road? This again shows the beauty and the difficulty of life. No cross, no crown. The suffering leads to resurrection. The passion and death of Jesus lead to our salvation. And so as such, we recognize that it is the cross that is the throne of Jesus. He chooses the difficult path. He calls us to follow with him. So shall we journey with you, Lord, on this Paschal road? Again, Jesus did not want the three apostles to just live on the mountain and pitch their tents in their little comfort zones. He asks us to be vulnerable, to take risks, to go out there, to be on mission, to pray, but to be moved to action so that we can transform and change lives. How is God calling us to do just that? Transfigure us, O Lord. Transfigure us, O Lord. Break the chains that bind us. Speak your healing word. And where you lead will follow. Transfigure us, O Lord. Lord, we thank you for these beautiful words. We thank you for Bob Hurd and this beautiful hymn. May it inspire us to go deeper and to truly be transfigured as we give you praise. Just like Peter, James, and John recognize your divinity and humanity, your power and dominion over us, so we too look to be changed, converted, so that we may emulate your love to the world and all we meet today. Happy Feast of the Transfiguration, friends. For God's Playbook, I'm Father Rico. God loves you and so do I. If you like what you hear, please consider supporting us using any of our affiliate links in the description below via Budsprout, Ko-Fi, or GoFundMe. Thanks, and God bless.